Runway edge lights are provided for a runway intended for use at night or for a precision approach runway intended for use by day or night. Runway edge lights shall be provided on a runway intended for takeoff with operating minima set below an RVR of 800 meters by day. They shall be placed along the full length of a runway and shall be in two parallel rows equidistant from the center line. They will be along the edge of the area declared to be usable as a runway or outside the edges of the area but not more than three meters away. They shall be uniformly spaced along the runway at intervals of not more than 60 meters for an instrument runway or intervals of not more than 100 meters for a non-instrument runway. They shall show white but if the threshold is displaced then the displaced element shall be edged in red lights in the approach direction. On some runways, particularly those without centerline lights, the runway edge lights will turn yellow to warn pilots that the end of the runway is fast approaching. This yellow caution zone covers the final third or 600 meters of the runway, whichever is the lesser distance. Runway edge lights shall show at all angles of azimuth necessary to provide the pilot with guidance whilst landing or taking off. All such lights shall show at angles of 15 degrees above the horizontal, with intensity adequate for the conditions of visibility and ambient light that the runway is designed for. Runway threshold lights shall be provided at a runway equipped with runway edge lighting, except on a non-instrument or non-precision approach runway, where the runway is displaced and wing bar lights are provided. When the threshold is at the extremity of the runway, Threshold lights should be placed in a row at right angles to the runway axis, as near to the end as possible, and in any case, not more than 3 metres outside the extremity. Threshold lights shall consist of at least 6 lights on non-instrument runways or non-precision approach runways. On a precision approach CAT-1 runway, consist of at least the number of lights that would be required if the lights were uniformly spaced at intervals of 3 metres between the runway edge lights and on precision approach CAT 2 and CAT 3 runways consist of lights uniformly spaced between the runway edge lights at intervals of not more than 3 metres. Wing bar lights shall be provided on non-instrument or non-precision runways where the threshold is displaced and threshold lights are not provided. They indicate where the threshold starts. They shall be symmetrically disposed about the runway centre line at the threshold in two groups or wing bars. Each bar shall be at least five lights, extending at least 10 metres outwards from the line of the runway edge lights with the innermost light of each bar in line with the runway edge lights. Runways that have edge lights shall have runway end lights. They are fixed, unidirectional red lights of an intensity that is suitable for the prevalent conditions. They will be positioned at right angles to the runway axis between the runway edge lights not more than 3 metres outside the end and consist of at least six equally spaced lights. On a precision approach CAT 3 runway, the lights shall not be spaced further apart than six meters. On precision approach CAT 2 or CAT 3 runways, white runway centerline lights shall be provided. They should also be installed on CAT 1 runways, particularly if the runway is used by aircraft with high landing speeds or the runway has a width greater than 50 metres. Should the RVR drop below 400 metres, then runway lights must be switched on. The lights shall be positioned along the centre line of the runway, but if this is not possible, they may all be uniformly offset by up to 60 centimetres. The lights shall run from the threshold to the runway end at the spacings shown here. 7.5 metres or 15 metres on a precision approach runway, CAT 3, 
7.5 meters, 15 meters, or 30 meters on a precision approach runway CAT 2 or other runway for which lights are provided. Centerline guidance for takeoff from the beginning of a runway paved area to the displaced threshold should be provided by an approach lighting system if its characteristics and intensity settings afford the required guidance during takeoff and it does not dazzle the pilot, or runway centerline lights, or barrettes of at least 3 metres in length and spaced uniformly at 30 metre intervals of an intensity that does not dazzle a pilot taking off. Centerline lights providing guidance to the threshold must be capable of being extinguished and similarly utilized approach lighting must be capable of having its intensity reduced to enable landing aircraft to properly identify the displaced runway threshold an example is shown here touchdown zone lights should be provided on precision approach cat 2 and cat 3 runways they will extend from the threshold for a distance of 900 metres, except on runways less than 1800 metres in length. The system is shortened not to extend beyond the middle of the runway. The pattern of light shall be formed by paired barrettes symmetrically located about the centerline. Touchdown lights shall be fixed unidirectional lights showing white. An example is shown here. Rapid exit taxiway indicator lights provide pilots with distance to go information to the nearest rapid exit taxiway on a runway to enhance situational awareness in low visibility conditions and enable pilots to apply braking action for more efficient rollout and runway exit speed. Six yellow lights adjacent to the runway centerline, configured as shown here, are spaced 100 metres apart the single light being 100 metres from the rapid exit taxiway. Stopway lights shall be provided for the full length of the stopway and be in two parallel rows that are equidistant from the centre line and coincident with the rows of the runway edge lights. They will also be provided across the end of the runway. The lights will be fixed unidirectional lights showing red in the direction of the runway. You can see an example of the layout here. Runway status lights combine airport lighting equipment with airport surveillance systems to create an additional layer of runway safety. This automatic system helps increase situational awareness by determining vehicle and aircraft locations. Red in-pavement lights illuminate when it's not safe to enter, cross, or begin takeoff on a runway. These lights are designed to reduce the number of runway incursions without interfering with normal and safe airport operations. It is important to understand that runway status lights only indicate a runway status. They do not indicate clearance to proceed onto or across a runway. Runway entrance lights, also known as RELs, are red and located where a taxiway intersects a runway. RELs illuminate when an aircraft is landing or taking off on a runway. The red lights indicate it is not safe to enter the runway environment. RELs go off just prior to the aircraft reaching the taxiway intersection. This allows air traffic controllers to use anticipated separation and keep the normal flow of traffic moving on the airport surface. Pilots must stop at the runway hold line and remain stopped when the RELs are on. You should remain clear of the runway anytime the RELs are illuminated. 
When the air traffic control tower issues a clearance to cross or proceed onto the runway, the entrance lights should not be illuminated or should go out by the time the controller finishes their transmission. Do not enter a runway without an ATC clearance, even if the entrance lights have gone out. Runway status lights only visually verify a controller's clearance. They do not act as a substitute for an ATC clearance. There may be times while waiting for a controller's clearance that you see the entrance lights turn on and off for several cycles. If an air traffic controller gives a clearance and the REL's are illuminated, do not cross over the red lights. Contact ATC and advise that you are stopped due to red lights. If your aircraft is already across the runway hold line when the lights illuminate, you should proceed using your best judgment and contact ATC as soon as possible. Takeoff hold lights, also referred to as THLs, are red and located on a runway's takeoff hold area. THLs are illuminated when an aircraft is in position on a runway's takeoff hold area and an aircraft or vehicle is on the runway somewhere in front of it. THLs turn off when the aircraft or vehicle is exiting the runway and is no longer a hazard to the departing aircraft. Like REL's, THL's indicate runway status. They do not substitute for an ATC clearance. You must wait for an ATC clearance to begin a takeoff roll. It is possible that you may observe several cycles of THL's while numerous aircraft or vehicles cross the runway downfield. If a controller issues a takeoff clearance and the THL's are illuminated, you should not begin the takeoff roll and should advise ATC that you are holding for red lights. If you have begun the departure roll and then observe illuminated THLs, you should abort the departure if it is safe to do so. If it is unsafe to abort the departure, you should proceed according to your best judgment, understanding that the lights are indicating the runway is unsafe for takeoff.